Today we're going to walk through the most important aspect of Revisto in my opinion and that is going to be Issue Tracker. So in today's tutorial we're going to walk through how to create an issue on a 2D plan and how that switches back into Revit. So there will be a series of these issue tracking videos to go through 3D, Navisworks, Revit, um, etc. So please stay tuned for the additional videos. So to start off, if we want to mark something up in 2D, we're going to specify the floor plan we're looking at. I'm going to pull up maybe the level 2 floor plan. And traditionally, we've printed this to a PDF and we've marked it up into maybe a third-party markup tool. So the nice thing about Revisto is that we know that this plan is always up to date because it's being exported with the live Revit model. So I'm going to zoom into a problem area. I'm actually going to have an issue with this door right here. So currently all I'm going to do is select this new issue button. Uh, so where you say create issue, you're going to see this in a number of different places. In the Revit add-in, in Navisworks, in AutoCAD, in Revisto, uh, well in the measuring tool, um, and I'm sure there's several other locations you see that. Wherever you can see this create issue button, it's going to track that within the central location of the issue tracker and it allows people to consolidate their issues all in one place instead of using email, uh, viewpoints, and Navisworks and a number of other different methods to track problems. So all I'm going to do is hit the new issue button and we see a tag come up. I'm going to drag and I'm going to drop this right outside the door of where this issue is occurring. Next I'm going to select a markup tool. I'm going to use our pencil today and I'm just going to circle that problem area. I'm going to write a short description of door will not meet spec and all I'm going to do is select done. When I select done it pushes it from 2D into the issue tracker. The nice thing about the issue tracker is it's set up like an iPhone style feed where all the information pertaining to this issue will fall underneath this category. So if we wanted to come into a Navisworks LED test, I'd select that and I can see all the information falling in that specific issue. So jumping back to our issue ID 447, which is door will not meet spec, the first process I'm going to take is by selecting the I button, I'm going to go down this quick checklist. The status is open because we haven't assigned this to somebody, so the next thing will be the title. We've already done the title. So I'll probably leave the title alone. Next I'll assign a deadline. So if there's an approximate time or a deadline that this issue needs to be resolved by, we'll select next week, Friday. When I select done, it will log that in. We'll now hit create it by. Uh, this is the date that we create the issue. We don't need to touch that. The assignee, who is myself, um, and we're going to default this and actually assign this to Scott. So now this issue has been assigned to Scott, so he's going to get an email notification telling him that there's an issue labeled door will not meet spec in Revisto. So now that Scott has been added to this, uh, this kind of replaces the email process of sending him an email and attaching a PDF. We're just doing this all in one simple process. The next step is I'll add watchers to this if I'd like. So that's going to give the ability to uh, other people to stay in tune with this specific issue. So this would be almost like CCing people on a specific email. So the nice thing about this is that when somebody doesn't respond, we can always see the latest change and update by selecting the issue tracker. So I'm going to add a couple of folks to this, such as James Ocean, and I'm also going to add Blood Armin to this as well and select done. As you can see, in our timeline, this is really tracking everything I've done. So at 11.49, it shows that I've created this issue, changed the deadline from this to the 27th of January. Scott's been added, Armin's been added as a watcher. So now I'll type in a quick note what I would have added otherwise in an email. Hey guys, this should be the correct spec. And this is basically an instant message feed that will, that will track all this information. So I can attach additional documents, I could add a photograph if I need it, but the nice thing about this is everything that we do on this issue now is tracked. So let's just pretend I'm Scott right now and I come in and I want to edit this markup. If I come in here and I'm going to make something really obnoxious here, and it's going to be this big square and I'm going to put this circle over here too just for visual reference. So when I select done, you can see that this first markup doesn't contain that, but all the way down here, a couple minutes later, it contains all of those markups. 
So I'm just going to minimize these and show you on the left side, we now have a 3D button. So if we select this, because following, following back to our 2D tutorial, this is an intelligent plan. This isn't a PDF. So when selecting the 3D, we're actually coming into that door that we marked up. So if I were to select this door, we can see all the metadata that came in from our Revit model about that door. Going back to our issue tracker, I can also specify 2D, and we can see where that falls on our 2D plan along with all the other issues that I have filtered in Revisto. So if I start typing door, we can see these issues starting to disappear, and we can see any other issue containing door on this floor plan. The last step now is instead of having to find a PDF that was marked up in an email and track that in Revit, we'll just jump right into our actual Revit model. So from here, we're going to select Revisto Issue Tracker and open this up. And all I got to do is double click on this door issue. And you're going to see immediately it's going to take us into the vector format Revit plan where we can actually change this door. So once we've changed this door, all we do is open back our issue tracker, select our I button, and change the status to solve. Once that status has been solved, usually in the process we'll have somebody else come in and actually close that issue out, and we know that that issue will no longer be a problem.